and once again an encouraging round of applause to the author par excellence of the third installment in the Shiva trilogy, Amish. on the bass guitars, Durgesh Koth on the keys, Amit Matre on the drums, the acoustic drums today, uh, Sukhul Chaukidar on the tabla and percussions, and I'm Saurabh Shetty on the vocals. We are the Indo Gypsies. Thanks a lot guys for having us over here. Um, come on man, they deserve an even more louder round of applause. Let's hear it! Everybody, Har Har Mahadev! Har Har Mahadev! All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Indo Gypsies, a big round of applause. Okay, everybody. Now, yes, yes, I totally agree with that kid. Okay, everybody, if you could gain your attentions to this. and poets hold court, where children are regaled, where people gravitate to be informed, to be entertained and to be enlightened. It gives me immense pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, today to invite you all to the official launch of the third installment in the Shiva trilogy, Amisha's The Oath of the Vayu Putras. And to do the same, we have our esteemed panelists here today with us. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, renowned columnist, Mr. Anil Dharkar. Please put your hands together for him, everyone. 
the CEO of Westland, Gautam Padmanabhan. Westland, the publishers of this book, for giving this book such a wonderful platform. And two very special guests that we have here with us, one of our most loved actors, Kajol, and director par, ex director par excellence, Shekhar Kapoor, ladies and gentlemen. And well, we couldn't contain our excitement enough. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you Amish. Minute. First the print media followed by the electronic media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just go hold on for a minute, we're going to be having photo rocks. Welcome them in a typical style. Everybody, Har Har Mahadev! Har Har Mahadev! Well, um, Amish, you see the kind of response that your books have garnered. And I think before we initiate the proceedings of unveiling uh, the Oath of the Vayaputras for everyone, your fans, your readers, your well-wishers, your family, all of them would like you to say a few words before we unveil a copy. Ladies and gentlemen, Amish. Hi, guys. Hi. This is... Uh I do as I'm told. Hi everyone, can I? Hi guys, hi. Uh, you know, it's uh, this is this is really surreal because I was I was standing at this very place a little less than three years ago, March 12th, uh, 2010. Uh, that was when uh, my first book, The Immortals of Melua, was launched. Uh, my very supportive and long-suffering family. Uh, was uh, was here that day. Uh, my wife Preeti, who's who's right there. Where, where? Ah, there she is. Yeah. My wife Preeti was there. My uh, my son Neil, who's I think sleeping somewhere out there. Uh, at that time, he was less than a year old. My uh, siblings, my parents, my in-laws, uh, they were all here. Uh, many of the crossword staff that you see around, including the uh, the host, the marketing guys, they many of them were here three years ago as well. Uh, my uh, my agent Anuj Bari was here. Uh, some friends I remember from uh, from those days, and I could recognize almost every single person in the audience because my family and I had coerced every single one of them to come to the event. <laughs> and uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Dharkar was there, at, uh, and a friend of mine, uh, a photographer uh, uh, Vikram Bawa, uh, they had launched the book. Uh, they had been coerced to come uh, for the launch as well. Uh, we had done some arm twisting, uh, and uh, you know, I, I since the audience knew me at that time, and they were all my friends, I, they pretty much knew that I had no creative bone in my body, so they didn't really expect anything. And I could feel their kind and sympathetic eyes on me because they felt that they were humoring me, and uh, I could I I can imagine the thought running through their mind was, okay, this is a modern to Amish, let's humor him. We'll buy the book and we'll throw it in the dustbin when we go home. Uh, and, uh, you know, my, my wife, very sweetly, just to ensure that the event didn't end in just five minutes, she'd actually planted questions in the audience. And uh, people had been coerced to ask those questions as well, and I had answers prepared for them. So we set up this whole charade. Okay? And that's how the book was launched. And uh, here we are today. The... Uh, Audience is a little bit more than uh, than what we had three years ago. Uh, uh, I uh, regrettably I don't recognize many of you, uh, and uh, I, if you if you if you see the people with me on stage, Mr. Darkar is still here uh, to launch my book, and I am delighted to say that this time he has not been coerced. He's come of his own free will. Uh, thank you, Mr. Darkar, so much. Thank you for coming here. My 
my favorite actress from when I was in college, Kajol, my wife and I, at that time she was my girlfriend, she's been my girlfriend, and we've been together since age 17, I think, okay? And some of the movies that, yeah, okay, I met her when I was 15, it took me two years to convince her that I'm not that bad. Uh, and we've been together ever since, and we used to love your movies. I was a huge fan, I'm still a huge fan of yours. I think she's one of the most talented and gifted actors in India. And, and she's here. She's here at my book launch, like, wow, man. Uh, and it's, it, it means the world to me that you're here. She's flown in from Bhopal today for this event, and it really means the world to me that you're here. And last, but certainly by no measure the least, uh, is Shekhar Kapoor. He's the director of one of my f most... Guys, 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 come on, come on, come on. Let's see if it come, okay? One of my... I'm the director of one of my most favorite movies of all time, Masu. Shekhar Kapoor, he's here. Uh, he, he's, he's flown in from Paris today. He wasn't sure if he could make it. I wasn't sure if he could make it. And uh, he's very obviously tired and jet lagged, but he still made it all the way out here. But he looks brilliant. <laughs> but I'm so delighted that, that you came. He's really tired. He's flown in from Paris today and he's still come out here. He's found the energy and the time to come out here, and I'm so touched that, that you find the time to come here. Thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm delighted that you're here. And in my mind, the fact of everything that we're seeing here today, for me, uh, proves to me what Lord Shiva can do. I, uh, a person who was creatively challenged, who I think is still creatively challenged, like me, a person who was an atheist like me, if he's brought me here, uh, it shows it shows the generosity of Lord Shiva. And in my mind, God tends to look at us that way. Okay? I'm sorry, I'm getting a little serious here. Okay? Uh, God doesn't differentiate between different sexes, castes, religions, uh, uh, nationalities, languages. Uh, whatever form God comes in, whether He comes as Lord Vishnu or Shaktima or Allah or Jesus Christ or Gautam Buddha, he wants to help us. Uh, to me, he came as Lord Shiva. And uh, I believe that God exists for one purpose and one purpose alone. That is to help us. We should allow him to help us. That's what I believe. I allow Lord Shiva to help me and, well, he's done a great job. Uh, <laughs> and lastly, I want to apologize to all of you. I know that uh, I've really tested your patience. I promised that the book would be out by 2012. Uh, it took me a lot longer than I expected. Uh, and I was quite sure when I announced 2012, I thought I'd finished the book. Uh, but, uh, you know, when the book comes out, I, I hope you, some of you guys are going to buy the books, right? <laughs> okay, so, okay, so when you guys see the book, you'll see it's a little, it's, it's actually a lot thicker, okay, than the first and second book. So it was much longer. It took me a long time to write. There are a lot of battle scenes in it which took a long time to write. Many characters had a lot to say and I had to allow them to have their say. And that's why it took me so long. My apologies. Uh, and as I always say, uh, anything that you like in the book is the blessing of Lord Shiva. Anything that you don't like is my inability to do justice to that blessing. Right? I hope you like the book. I hope I can give you a sense of completion uh, with the third book of the Shiva trilogy. Om Namah Shivaya, the universe bows to Lord Shiva, I bow to Lord Shiva. Thank you very much, Amish. You couldn't have said it any better. And now the moment that all of you are waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be officially unveiling the copy of the Oath of the Vayu Putras for all of you. May I request all our panelists, Kajol, Shekhar, Anil, Gautam, along with Amish, to kindly unveil the copy for us. We have a big, huge copy that's going to be placed right at the center. For all those who have already got your copies in hand, we have a discussion to follow right after the launch, soon after which Amish is going to be signing those very copies. We also request you to hold on to the coupons that are distributed out to all of you. That's going to determine the sequence of... And here we go, everybody. The Oath of the Vayu Putras, the final book in the Shiva trilogy.
Amish here for all of us sharing this book with us at Crossword. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause and a chant. Let's all go Har Har Mahade! Har Har Mahade! We also request the print uh, media to settle down in a bit. We have, uh, we need photo ops with the electronic media that's standing right behind the print media. Thank you very much. And now once again, a glance for the electronic media right behind there. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much once again. Oh, Ladies you. and gentlemen, right here beside me, we have Gautam Padmanabhan. Can we have a round of applause for him as well? I think a publisher plays a very, very important role in making any particular book see the light of day. And for us, ladies and gentlemen, the very fact that we see the oath of the Vayu Putras, we have Westland to thank right from its inception, like Amish said, his be, uh, the kind of people that he's worked with, and the very fact that we have the publisher with us on the dais goes to explain the kind of bond shared with the entire trilogy. So Gautam, I request you to kindly say a few words and talk about your association with Amish. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, my association has been right from the beginning. First as a distributor of the book and then later as a publisher. Uh, it's really been a great, great journey. And today, frankly, I feel a sense of relief because uh, yesterday we had the issue of, a uh, logistical issue of putting out three and a half lakh copies into the bookshops. <laughs> and to make sure that the books are available only here tonight for all of you. And, you know, the book goes on sale actually tomorrow morning uh, after 9 a.m. So, I, I am relieved because we managed to do that. In some ways, it's a culmination of a journey, but at the same time, I think it's just, I don't think we've come to the end of the road. We're somewhere in the middle. We have published the third book. But I do believe that this book, this series is going to break uh, new ground, break fresh records. And, you know, there's lots more to look out for. For example, the movie is going to be made. And we really look forward to our associ continuing association with Amish. And we do hope that down the line, we also get to publish the next work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gautam, and we hope so as well. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, like Amish said, and like I clearly remember at the launch of the first book, we had Anil Dharkar with us, and he's here today as well. Anil, we're so pleased to see you. Could you please tell us about the journey so far? I'm sure it must have been quite a nostalgia, putting together the entire event, the first time that we were right here at Crossword. I was there, you were there, and you know uh, the kind of history that followed. Anil. What, what we are, what we are seeing today, a publishing phenomenon, nothing less. You know, I've, I've been to so many book launches as part of my job, as part of what I do. I've come here more times than I can remember. And with very famous writers. Uh, I've been here with Amitav Ghosh and Gregory Roberts and... Uh, in touch with Wilbur Smith. So, you know, we're talking of people known the world over. But I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> when, when we have Amish Tripathi, why do we need John Abraham? somewhere. I mean, they, we really have. Well, that's incredible. So, but the crowds right from outside and there were bouncers there. I've never seen bouncers at a, at a book event. So, and I need, I need a special dispensation to walk in today. So, but this phenomenon, I take complete credit for. And, and I'll tell you why. Some of you have already heard this story, maybe. But uh, maybe four years ago, uh, his uncle, whom I know, uh, Himanshu Roy, 
rang me up and said, you know, I have this uh, young nephew who has aspirations to be a writer. I don't know if he can write, but you know, <laughs> but, but he is very determined to write. And would you, would you look at the manuscript? And my, my heart sinks every time someone asks me to look at a manuscript. <clears throat> but you know, one can't say uh, no to a very senior police officer, so I agreed. <laughs> And, and, and the manuscript came and I, I looked at it and uh, I was struck by how, how fast the narrative flowed and what an original idea it was. But, but you know, I was, I was asked to do a job just to try and give my inputs. So I made a lot of notes. I made a lot of notes, copious notes. I spent more time than I ever do on a manuscript. And then this young man turned up to my office. We sat together. I gave him my gyan, my wisdom. When the book came out, I found it ignored everything. <laughs> so I suppose it just showed how, how sure he was of what he was doing. Uh, he, he credits this to Lord Shiva, but I think he should take credit too. And I'm happy to say that I launched his first book, I launched his second book, and now I'm here for his third book, and I'll be here for all your other books. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Anil. It's a pleasure to have you here every time at Crossword. Um, well, Tajol, it's a pleasure having you here as well. We had you a while back, uh, right here at Crossword, launching another book, and here, here you are again today. And we know you're an avid reader. Uh, we'd love to hear you say something about uh, the book. Uh, well, I'm here today. I have never met Amish before. I just picked up. I really am here today because I seriously, seriously loved the books. I really did. I think, um, I think they were fabulously written for the simple fact that they were so simply written. They were just really, really simply written. I know that I can tell my daughter today. She asked me, she was like, you know, where are you going? I said, I'm going for a book launch. And she was like, uh, really, can I read it? She's nine and a half. And I was like, yes, actually, it gives me great pleasure to tell you that yes, you can pick up a book from my library and read it. It's that kind of a book that could interest my daughter and me at the same time. And um, I loved it. I was waiting so badly to, for the third book to come out. And you're right. It just took you too damn long for it. <laughs> but uh, it's here. and. Um, what can I say? I'm here because of the fact that, um, you know, I just, I, I love the books. I love the way you write. Thank you so very much, Kajal. Thank you. And well, Shekhar, talking about all the people that have really come a long way to be here at this event. You've come all the way from Paris. I mean, you could make it and we're so glad you could. And, uh, and don't worry, you don't look jet lagged at all. But, yeah, and uh, I'm sure uh, whatever you've, you've tweeted and all, I'm sure the, uh, all the fans agree that we have such a phenomenal book, such a talented young author. What do you think about the book, Anamish? Well, <clears throat> I haven't read the third book yet. You have it. I have it. You have it now. Yeah, he emailed it to me. <laughs> um, no, Amish is India's first literary pop star. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I drove here and thought, shit, I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> Maybe I should just sit down and write a book. It should be easier, shouldn't it? Than making a film, handling actors. You know, <laughs> when, when you're writing a book, your characters do, your actors do exactly what you want them to. When you're making a film, they have to go home, they have problems. <laughs> Great. And they have egos. <laughs> Actually then, try writing one. You have no idea how difficult it is. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he stays calm. I don't know wh what time. I'm always asking people these questions. How do you write? When do you write? I can't sit still for 10 minutes. How do you find all that time to write? I think, I think all writers' wives should leave their husbands. I think that there's a, a, a little catch thing called writer's widow. <laughs> they go, they go away. And as far as, and as for Lord Shiva, 
I have no idea. Some people say he's the Lord of Darkness. I love that. I'm a filmmaker. Some people say he's the Lord of Nothingness. I look up and say, well, maybe that's right. Some people say he's the creator and the destroyer. Both. I don't know what you know about Lord Shiva. I have no idea, but I prefer Lord of Darkness. I think that's where it comes from. So I, yeah. Lord Shiva makes him write books, makes me read them, makes all of you read them, and I think that's a great relationship. So thank you for, be, for me uh, calling me here. I'm so glad. And congratulations. And uh, I love this guy. I, I just love his enthusiasm. I just love the way he goes at it. I love his pop qualities. You know, he not only creates a book, he makes it a multimedia event. And that's where we're all headed. So congratulations and good luck for the book. And I'm going to read it. I promise you. Thank you very much, Shaker. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And well, now, Amish is definitely going to be signing copies, the ones you have, the ones you're going to be buying. But before that, uh, we, we have a limited span of time for questions. I know you can, uh, you can pose a lot of one-on-one -on -one questions when we have the signing. So if there's anybody in the audience with questions, I'm afraid we're not accessible to pass on the mic. You just have to raise your hand up and be loud enough. Hi, Vani. Uh, just, just, just introduce yourself. Hi, Sneha. Uh, now, the Shiva to come to an end, what's next in store for us? I don't know what's next in store for you. What, what's next in store for me is a holiday. Uh, I, my, my family has been extremely patient, uh, both uh, Neil and Preeti. And I don't know if they deserve a holiday with me, but they certainly deserve a holiday, so I'm going to take them out. Uh, post that, look, I have various book ideas in my mind, uh, all in the space of mythology and history. So, uh, uh, you know, a story idea on Lord Manu, a story idea on Lord Rudra, a uh, story based on Emperor Akbar, story on the Rama, and story on the Mahabharata, a story uh, based on Egyptian mythology. And inshallah, I'll write all of them. I have enough ideas to keep me busy for the next 20 years. If you guys keep buying books, I might uh, keep at it. If you stop buying, I'll have to move back to banking. We certainly don't want that, Amish. Definitely not. Well, anybody else? You can just raise your hand up and shoot. Anybody in the audience with questions? Anyone on the other side? Yes, please, ma'am. I didn't, I didn't decide that at the beginning. I thought it's going to be one book. And in my mind, it's actu it is actually one book. It's just broken into three for convenience. Uh, because you can't release a 1,500-page book. Uh, no one will buy that. Uh, it's also, my three books are, uh, from what I've been told, it's, it's a good marketing idea. Uh, so, uh, but I, uh, in my mind, it's one continuous book. And it grew so long that I had to kind of break it up. Uh, that's, that's actually kind of how it emerged. And the story just kept growing more and more. As I wrote it, yeah. but this is this is the last one of the trilogy. Thank you very much. You yes, can't have please. a trilogy in four parts. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Hey, hey, Ram, how are you doing? I feel very sad, very depressed. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm devastated. I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. I'm delighted, man, obviously. I'm just completely delighted. I can't believe it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a dream. Don't wake me up. Sorry, you were outshouted. I'm so sorry. Just, just, just hold on, dear. Hold on. Hold on. We'll come back to you. Just give us a minute. Yes, please. Yes, Shruti. It, uh, uh, the book started as a pure philosophical thesis. Uh, if there are questions for the others, I mean, I'm sure everyone would be, they would also be delighted to answer. But okay, okay. Uh, it started as a pure philosophical thesis. My family and I, we are watching TV and we discovered something interesting. We all know that for Indians, gods are called devas and demons are called asuras. What many of us don't know is that for the ancient Persians, uh, gods are called ahuras and demons are called daivas. It's the exact opposite. Uh, the ancient, not the Islamic versions, the Zoroastrian versions. 
Dr. Ramiyar was uh, was just here. Uh, uh, he is the principal of uh, the Parsi Madrasa, and uh, one is I, uh, my wife is our Parsi. I've learned a lot from that. But we discovered this on a TV program, and that started an interesting discussion in our family that the ancient Indians and the ancient Persians had met. We'd probably be calling each other evil because my god is your demon, your god is my demon. Hell, you must be evil, right? So, who would be right? Would the Indians be right or would the Persians be right? The obvious answer is neither. It's just a different way of life. Neither of them are evil. So, if neither of them are evil, then what is evil? Okay, so, a philosophy occurred to me as an answer uh, to that question. And uh, I shared that with my family and they suggested it's a nice philosophy. Try and write it down. So, it began as a pure philosophical thesis, actually. Which kind of got converted into an adventure. And through this adventure, I'm trying to convey my philosophy of what is evil which I feel has some relevance in today's world as well. Slightly boring answer, my apologies. Yes, please, the lady in the, that corner there. Yeah, uh, my question is... Hey, what's hi. your name, what's your name? Dipti. Hi, Dipti. Hi, Yamish. Um, I'm a big fan of your book. Thank you, thank you so like, much. Like, I shouldn't have, like, been saying this. Just like <laughs> you, even I am a big Shiva devotee. So, um, how do you, like, um, how do you feel that, uh, like, is he behind you? As in, he gave you the insight to start writing the book. As in, how deeply you feel you're connected to Lord Shiva? He's, he's inside me. He's not behind me, he's inside me. And he's inside every one of us, yeah. in different forms. Okay? He could, he could be inside you as Vishnu, as Shaktima, as many different forms. But he's inside you. That's a concept of Harar Mahadev. That was a concept of uh, the ancient religions across uh, uh, countries. That God lives within you. Your task is to discover the God within. You don't need to, with due apologies to Dylan Thomas, you don't need to look up on a sad height uh, to try and find God. Uh, you just need to look within. God lives within you. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, if I may, uh, following up on that question, that uh, followers, followers of Shiva have had a particular picture in their mind about, about Lord Shiva, right? Uh, and that has gone for generations and generations and centuries. And suddenly you come up with a picture which is totally different. You have humanized him, you have you made him uh, use very colloquial language and so on. Uh, you have given him intensely romantic feelings and all of that. <laughs> and yes, yes. <laughs> now, now, what I want to know is how, how does a conventional Shiva worshipper react to what he might think of as uh, distortions? Actually, there's, there's nothing uh, different about this. You read the Kumar Sambhav, written by Kalidas, uh, the, one of the greatest uh, uh, Sanskrit writers ever. And the, uh, there's no other word for it, the erotic love described between Shiva and Parvati is so immense and so intense, and this was written 1500 years ago. There's nothing new in, uh, as one of my younger writers put it, the cool dude qualities of Lord Shiva. It's been around for thousands of years. I actually haven't done anything new. If you see his, uh, his traditional form as, uh, as, uh, as a god as well, uh, he, he treats his wife as an equal. In, his, uh, in all his representations, Parvati ji sits next to him, shoulder to shoulder, as an equal. She doesn't sit below him. Uh, in all his traditional myths, she many times opposes him and does what she thinks is right. And he doesn't punish her, he continues to obsessively love her. Uh, he is a democratic god, he treats his, and no disrespect to any other god, but he is a democratic god, he treats his devotees with respect. Uh, he is a brilliant dancer, he is a god of music, he, is, uh, he drinks bhang, he smokes marijuana. Uh, he, is, he is a very cool god, even in his traditional form. Uh, so the, actually, I don't think there's anything different in my books, actually. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid yes, we'll have... In my, in my yes, books, please. he speaks in English, non-Sanskrit, please. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a long book signing that is to follow. So I'm afraid we'll have to cut the audience questions short right here. But uh, please do pose your questions on your one-on-one -on -one interactions with Amish. We have one last question. We have a whole load of questions actually from Twitter, but we're going to pick one for you, Amish. And this one is from Uma Jaisekhar. She says, Hi, Amish. In your books, there were, there were very few characters who spoke, about, who spoke about past life. That's the karma. Do you believe in the concept personally of rebirth and reincarnation? Yeah, I believe in reincarnation. The problem is you can't prove it. Uh, the, one of the philosophies I, be, I believe in is, believe the philosophy which gives you uh, uh, momentum, which gives you energy. Uh, because the only thing that you have proof for is the present moment. Okay, anything in the past, uh, and you ask, if you ask uh, 
everyone out here 10 years later their memory of this event we'll have 100 versions of it so the past actually exists in each person's mind uh, the future there are so many different possible variations depending on the choices that you make the only thing that's real is this moment so the point is believe the theory that gives you peace believe the theory that energizes you uh, believing in past lives energizes me uh, if for someone else it doesn't energize him then don't believe it it doesn't matter because you can't prove it thank you so much amish um, and now uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, yeah we need uh, I'm, I'm really sorry the media interactions as well can follow but uh, we need to wrap the event officially right now. Like I said, we are going to be having the book signing and we're going to be having uh, tons of interactions to follow. But first, a very, very special thank you. I told that Amish would like to read first. Uh, Amish, if you could maybe read a small excerpt and then maybe we could have a couple of media questions. Okay. Okay, I have to, I have to read. I'm going to read two and a half pages. For those of you who have the book, uh, for those who aren't buying the book, shame on you. Uh, for those of you who do have the book, look at page 29. Uh, that's where I'm going to read from. Uh, don't worry, this is not going to spoil the book for you. I've selected a section which might surprise you a little bit, but will not spoil the book for you. For those of you who've read the first two books, it might surprise you a little bit. Page, uh, page 29, uh, after, after the section break. It begins with my Lord. Are we there? Okay. Here we go. My Lord, a bird courier has just arrived with a message for your eyes only, said Kanakala, the Meluhan Prime Minister. That's why I brought it personally. Daksha occupied his private chambers, a worried Virini seated beside him. He took the letter from Kanakala and dismissed her. With a polite namaste towards her emperor, an empress, Kanakala turned to leave. Glancing back, she glimpsed a rare intimate moment between them as they held each other's hand. Last, the last few months had inured her to the strange goings-on in Meluha. Daksha's past betrayal of Sati during her first pregnancy had shocked her enormously. Kanakala had lost all respect for her emperor. She continued with the job because she remained loyal to Meluha. She did not, she had not even, sorry, she had even stopped questioning the strange orders from her lord, like the one he had given the previous day about making arrangements for Brigu and Dilipa to travel to the ruins of Mount Mandar. She could understand Maharishi Brigu's interest in going there, but what earthly reason could there be for the Swadipan emperor to go as well? Kanakala saw Daksha letting go of Virini's hand and breaking the seal of the letter as she shut the door quietly behind her. Daksha began to cry. Virini immediately reached over and snatched the letter from him. As she read through it quickly, Virini let out a deep sigh of relief as tears escaped from her eyes. She's safe. They're all safe. On the surface, the plan to assassinate the Nilkan worked towards the unique interests of all the three main, con the three main conspirators, Maharishi Brigu, Emperor Daksha and Emperor Dilipa. For Brigu, the gain was obvious. For Dilipa, it meant, I'm going to skip over those two, three lines because it might spoil things a little bit. For Dilipa, it meant the killing of two birds with a single stone. Not only would he continue to receive the elixir from Brigu, but he'd also do away with Bhagirath, his heir and greatest threat. Daksha would be rid of the troublesome Nilka and would be able to blame all ills on the Nagas once again. The plan was perfect, except that Daksha could not countenance the killing of his daughter. He was willing to put everything on the line to ensure that Sati was left unharmed. Brigu and Dilipa had hoped that with a rupture in relations between Daksha and his daughter, the Meluan emperor would support this mission wholeheartedly. But they were wrong. Daksha's love for Sati was deeper than his hatred for Shiva. Upon Virini's advice, Daksha had sent the Arishtinemi brigadier, Maya Shrenik, known for his blind loyalty to Meluha and deep devotion to the Nilkanth on a secret mission. My Shrenik was to accompany the five ships that had been sent to attack the Nilkanth's convoy. Virini had covertly kept in touch with the daughter Kali through all these years of strife and had made Daksha aware of the river warning and defense systems of the Nagas. All that had to be done 
was to get the alarm triggered in time. My Shenik's mission was to ensure that the alarms went off. He was to escape and return to Meluha after that. The Arshtan Amy Brigadier and the Acting General of the Meluhan Army had carried a homing pigeon with him to deliver the news of the subsequent battle to Daksha. The happy message for the Meluhan Emperor was that the progeny Daksha cared for, Sati and Karthik, were alive and safe. Virini looked at her husband. If only you would listen to me a bit more. I think this is something all wives say. Daksha breathed deeply. If Lord Brigu ever finds out, would you rather your children were dead? Daksha sighed. He would do anything to ensure Sati's safety. He shook his head. No. Then thank the Paramatma that our plan worked and never breathe a word of this to anyone. Ever. Daksha nodded. He took the letter from Birini and set it aflame, holding it by the edge for as long as possible to ensure that every part of it had charred beyond recognition. Thank you so much, Amish. Well, with due consideration to the media, we can take two questions at the most from the media. Two questions. Yes, please. The lady right there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you could just be seated. I have a... Is it on? I have a question from your wife. Can I ask, can I ask you a question? Are Hi. you not glad that he's an amazing writer and never chose to be an actor? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's an amazing writer. I think yeah, I'll just I just keep it at that. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Shekhar, for that question. We have um, someone from the media. Yes, please, ma'am. Just be a little loud. Playing Shiva, <laughs> the lady of darkness, of nothingness. But how do you think it will pan out as a movie? You know how much, when I asked his publisher, where is he? There he is. I said, could I make this in a movie? He quoted me a figure that was impossible. So he'll have to go to a bigger director than me. So for me, I mean, he, they're, they're way out of my range, really way out. The buzz is that Karan is making a movie on uh, the film. Uh, yeah, they're absolutely in Karan's range. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Karan has, uh, has contacted the Indian language rights for uh, uh, for uh, the Immortals of Melua and for options for the subsequent books. And uh, uh, Dharma Productions is working on the script right now and inshallah we will make a movie that is worthy of Lord Shiva. Karan should answer that. But yeah. Karan. Sorry, like <laughs> <laughs> you can't play Shiva. <laughs> I can play nothingness. <laughs> All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen and members of the media, thank you very much for your questions. Once again, I would like to thank all our panelists, starting with Kajol, Shekhar, Anil, thank you so much for being here with us, and Gautam, and Amish, to all your fans, to all the customers we have here, we, can't, we cannot wait for what comes next. But for the oath of the Vayuputras, many, many congratulations. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the third book of the Shiva Trilogy, the oath of the Vayuputras launched. We have Amish here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it in the typical style. Har Har Mahadev! Har Har Mahadev! Har Har Mahadev!